Reptile behavior is something that we are hearing about more and more every day, which is great. But unfortunately, a lot of that stops short to where most of the time we're really only thinking about husbandry practices. If the animal's eating, we're doing a good job. If it's shedding, we're doing a good job. If it's being reactive or defensive and striking, that means that we aren't leaving them alone. That's the type of behaviors that we normally think about. Or even, for instance, adaptations like a frilled dragon or a frilled lizard throwing up their fill because they feel anxious or threatened. Or uh, even times in, when we're talking about hunting, like uh, caudal luring with green tree pythons or even the spider-tailed viper that has that really cool looking tail that they use for luring in birds and other animals so that way they can eat them. No, we're talking about more complex behaviors that are 100% documented by a lot of other different species of animals that for whatever reason, reptiles always just kind of get forgotten about, shunted aside, or just not even talked about. So today I wanna to talk about five examples of well-documented cases of complex reptile behavior that is really cool that maybe we can use to apply to our own reptile keeping practices. The first one is really, really cool. This happened back in 1996. It was the very first time the study had been done and recorded where a reptile was shown to actually play, not just interact and investigate, but to actually play with objects. In a zoo, there was a soft-shelled Nile turtle that was shown to be starting to exhibit a lot of symptoms of stress and anxiety, rubbing, scraping on the sides of his pond and enclosure, not eating a whole lot. And so they tried to enrich his environment a little bit and throwing in quite a few different types of toys. And they found that his behavior changed very quickly and dynamically. It was actually shown that he interacted with an assortment of toys all the time, including balls, hula hoops, floating discs, all sorts of stuff. Even including he liked to actually seem to enjoy a game of almost tug of war with some of his with some of his keepers with a garden hose where he would actually hold on to the garden hose and pull and try to tug along and he would frequently go back and try to do that. There's actually even, I will try to see if I can get a little bit of the video for that of him attempting to play with the keeping in mind this is 1996 so the video is not great at all but he was shown to actually be playing with those objects almost twice as much as young vertebrates. So we're thinking mammals, so puppies, kittens, young bear cubs, those type of animals. It was shown that pig face, being the name of this turtle, was actually playing almost twice as often as vertebrate mammals, some of the most playful things that we can think of normally, and he's playing even more often. If that is not an example of complex behavior, I don't know what is. The next one is actually really, really cool because number one, it talks about one of my favorite species of snakes, but because it, it's documenting a behavior that we would never really think about. And that is back in 2017, a study was done upon Cuban boas. So Cuban boas, they're actually the largest terrestrial carnivore on the island of Cuba. They're even the second longest boa on average. Obviously, the green anaconda takes it, but these guys can get over 14 feet long. So very long snakes. A study was done that found that they are the first documented species of snake that hunts in packs or at least in groups. They found that Cuban boas, as well as a lot of the other Hispaniola type boas, like the Dominican uh, Red Mountain boas and the Puerto Rican boas, they spend a lot of time in cave systems where they'll hang out near the entrance or in the caves, higher up at elevation into the tops of the caves, and they will snag bats as they come in and out of the cave at night and in the morning when they're feeding. And they saw that Cuban boas specifically when there were more than one of them, they would coordinate their positions in the cave to create almost a fence that would essentially make it so that the bats would have to go towards the animals. And they found that the hunting success rate of the group of animals was significantly higher than individual animals. Absolutely insane. Now they think that there are a number of species of snakes that probably do this, but this is the first one in the wild that they have actually been able to show that they do coordinate their positions. It's not nearly as complex as hunting behavior as we think of with like, you know, African painted dogs, wolves, or even chimpanzees where a lot of their communication while hunting is purely by body language and by eyesight. They seem to just by spatial recognition figure out the best places to position themselves to be able to hunt more efficiently at a higher success rate. Super, super cool. And it, it makes me want to get several Cuban boas 
to see if they interact or behave better together, but because that would require an enormous enclosure that I have now very quickly filled my shop with, that's probably never gonna happen. We're gonna have multiple Cuban boas, but I would just love to be able to see like a large zoological setup and display to show multiple Cuban boas and then watch and track their behavior over time to see if they do that or if they ever do anything like that or if it's caused by the environment or the prey type or wherever that is it's just really really the cool. next one is probably the most famous and certainly the most well documented behavior and that is crocodilian parenting behavior so as we all know most species of reptiles including all crocodilians will lay their eggs in either a mound or in a nest or somewhere like that and then some species will guard their eggs like many species of snakes will specifically Pythons will wrap around their eggs and they will even vibrate themselves to keep them warm and to thermoregulate the eggs properly. Then, you know, a lot of some reptiles don't at all, like sea turtles lay their eggs in the sand and then they're out of there. And then crocodilians, they build their mounds, they build their nests, and then very often for the majority of the time, if not the entire time of during incubation, they will guard that mound from other predators from other crocodilians, from people, from whatever. They will be very, very defensive of that egg mound. And then once they start to hatch, that's when their parenting behavior really starts to kick in beyond the normal just guarding the nest. All baby crocodilians will create, essentially it's a distress call, that uh, uh, sound, you know? You know what I'm getting at, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna do that again. But they all make that noise. What happens when they start to do that, when they start to hatch out, the female of multiple different species of crocodilians have been shown to actually start to unearth their mound and actually assist in hatching out some of the babies to where they will very lightly in their mouth pick up the eggs and just enough the right amount of pressure to crack open the eggs to help the babies get out and then after they're all out they have been shown to actually help take the babies from the nest to the water carrying them in their mouths and then some species of crocodilians, they've been shown to actually stick around, usually in like ponds or estuaries, where they're, you know, essentially like they're like a little nursery for the little baby guys, where they will hang out for a while and actually guard the area from other crocodilians or large birds or even large fish. They will actually guard their babies in the area once they hatch for sometimes extended periods of time. Now, the most dynamic example of this comes from the male Indian gharial. So the gharials are a species of very slender snouted, long slender snouted crocodilians found in India that are fish eaters. But they have now been shown that, that both of them, but specifically the male gharial, will actually carry all of his babies on top of his back, elevated out of the water like a raft, to physically create a like a little border in physical separation from the water and predators that he will actually do that. It's just really, really cool and amazing behavior that is just really fun and really interesting to think about these incredibly underestimated, highly intelligent animals. This next one I actually talked about in one of my very first videos, but honestly, I don't even recommend going back and watching some of those videos. I like to leave them up because you can sit there and watch the progression, but it's a little rough to listen to some of those older videos. But this one was actually really cool. This deals with a species of night lizard found in the Mojave Desert. A five-year study was done by the University of Santa Cruz and they discovered that a species of night lizard actually stays in familial groups for multiple generations. Essentially what they did is they went and they found different groupings and different kind of communities almost of night lizards that were found to be sheltering under place under fallen Joshua trees and other detritus for multiple time periods over the course of several years. And the same individuals found in all stages of life from newly hatched, which are very difficult to find in general. They're very, very elusive, very cryptic animals, even more than the adults, all the way through younger, it seemed adults, sub-adults, all the way to older mature animals all staying together, which is kind of odd. Normally you think that lizards would predate each other, especially the small ones, but they were all staying together, the same individuals over multiple years. And through DNA analysis, they actually showed that they were all related. So for whatever reason, they have found that staying in this family group is more beneficial to their survival than, stay, than separating out like we would traditionally think for lizards. They actually think there's quite a few different species of lizards that do in fact do this, most of which 
are live bearers, including this night lizard. And they think that there may or may not have something to do with having live bearing offspring rather than laying eggs that can tie to this, you know, it can add more to this likelihood of this familiar grouping and staying together versus different egg laying ones. In fact, there are only two out of their list of several species that actually lay eggs that they think will consistently stay in these familial groups versus the live bearers. And evolutionary speaking is really what I'm getting at, that the live bearing procedure of reproduction seems to more benefit and indicate this type of behavior than just laying eggs. Really, really cool, something you don't think about. We've heard talks about like, you know, gopher tortoises or even rattlesnakes, like visiting with other members of their species and not in relation to brumation or reproduction. But this is like on a whole other level, just really, really The last cool. one is the one that probably has the least verified documented information, but I felt like that there is so much anecdotal evidence and references, even including myself and people that I know in person, that it can't really be ignored. And that is just how intelligent specifically crocodilians are. We all know that king cobras and reticulated pythons and all the monitor species are highly intelligent, very trainable, very adaptable, very, very cool intelligent species. But crocodilians, as I said before, are always underestimated and kind of shunted to the side when it comes to intelligence. They are very, very intelligent. And in fact, they can even be just as personable, or at least they appear to be, as several other species of reptiles that we are commonly associated and think about. Again, very anecdotal, showing just little snippets, but it can't really be ignored with how much there is out there verified evidence of this behavior. Think about all of the different TikToks and Instagrams and Facebook stories you see of people with their, you know, emotional support alligator or the people carrying just like a crocodile down the street or that one video of the little girl playing in the sprinklers with her pet alligator where it's very clear to see that the alligator is or the crocodilian in general is not distressed. It's very calm. It's not exhibiting any signs of stress, but they are still engaging with this human, which is very odd. And then there are other times where they are known to recognize individuals versus others. This has been shown in mammals and birds and monitors and reticulated pythons and king cobras, but it's also been shown in crocodilians. For example, my friends at Colorado Gators, they know when they see the director of it, he has this big hat with a big feather. When they see him coming up, that usually means that they're gonna get messed with, so they dip underwater. Like, nope, we're not messing with you today. And especially, but if they see a food bucket, they go, oh, food, okay, let's see with that. And then they see the red medical bucket when it comes time to see whether or not that an alligator might possibly be injured, they all run away too because they don't want to get messed with. When they see other people that don't often interact with them on a personal wrangling uh, level, they will usually stick around longer and wait to see whether or not they have a medical bucket or a food bucket or if they're going to jump in the enclosure with them. The same thing goes for other species of crocodilians that they have on the on the wildlife park, including you know the Nile crocodiles and the different species of caiman. To where individuals that interact with them in ways that they're not exactly happy with, they avoid their contact. But with other people, they will stick around and wait to see what they're going to do. Just really, really cool. And again, all of these other examples, there's verified documentation of it. There's studies been done, papers been written. This one, not quite as much. And again, you only see snippets like the TikToks and the Instagram stories and stuff like that. So you don't get the full picture. 100% want to focus on that part that you don't get the full picture all of the time. It's not like a full study where they're studying it for extended periods of time all the time. But you can't really ignore it. And you can clearly see when animals are in distress, even reptiles, even people who aren't familiar with reptiles, they can see when an animal is in distress. And for a lot of these videos, they're not. They're perfectly calm. It's really cool. They're interacting with them when there isn't even food involved for different training periods where they're just coming up and seemingly wanting interaction. It's just really, really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was really fun to dig into this. It was actually a little difficult to try to find verified information. That's why you. That's why kind of I ended up just kind of softballing in that last one where it's a little bit more anecdotal. But it's just really cool to see all these different verified accounts of 
just the group of reptiles themselves just being forgotten about and underestimated when it comes to not only behavior, complex behavior, but intelligence as well. And we are really starting to kind of see the turn in the tide from that, not only for people in the hobby, but hopefully for humanity as a whole, because how many times are reptiles still associated negatively? So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna throw this up in my top five playlist. I have a whole other top five playlist about different species, different facts, really cool stuff there. If you wanna check that playlist out, it helps my uh, click-through rate, lets YouTube like push my content, helps me get out there. Very much appreciated. If you also wanna feel like supporting me uh, financially at all, because I am trying to do this full time, I do have my Patreon, the link's down in the description of this video. Uh, a bunch of different tiers from small little gifts t-shirts, video things, all sorts of really fun stuff. And even just, you know, it goes from a dollar and all the way up. So if you don't need to, I totally understand. I know times are hard. Just watching these videos does help me out. I really, really appreciate it. Again, hopefully you enjoy this video. Thank you so much for coming with me along on this journey as I stumble through this very end again. Thank you again so much. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.